when Chris walked out of his house that night, there was no way that he could have known that he would never return. 24-year-old Christian Collins ended up being set up to be robbed by Gregory Shelton. The robbery didn't go as planned, and Chris was taken out by Laron Horrell, who was one of the guys that was a part of a stick-up crew that was led by Martez C. The next day, 27-year-old Gregory Shelton was found dead in Central Park. Shelton was shot to death by Martez C. after he failed to get rid of his phone like Martez had told him to. I guess karma struck pretty fast. Please, oh please, uh oh, uh oh, I said something was wrong. I been trying to call my child all day. Wait, was the whole lot of different types of people. Greg was the one that called the guy. You know, I heard Maine telling Greg to get rid of his phone. So Maine pretty much admitted to shooting Greg. Yeah. Martez C, a.k.a. Maine, and his two brothers, Cortez and Demarius, grew up in a household where their mother and grandmother emphasized going to church. Yolanda raised her boys the best way she knew how, but when they got older, the streets began to corrupt their souls. After getting his GED and working at a Little Caesars, Maine began to realize that this wasn't going to be enough to support him and his family. He began robbing, and that adrenaline rush was so intense that he became addicted. He eventually would end up doing contracted hits as well. On December 28th, 2008, Martez and Laurent carried out a contract hit. Osmond Williams had allegedly stole some money from a guy named Kareem. Osmond was then targeted as retribution for that deed. Kareem would put a hit on Osmond, which would be arranged by Michael Mays, and carried out by C and Harrell. Osmond and his 17-year-old girlfriend, Darrell Sampson, will both end up being killed in an alley on the 7400 block of First Avenue in Eastlake. Police say Sampson was likely killed because she was with Osmond at the time. Wrong place, wrong time scenario. It wasn't until Lonnie Vine ended up being set up and killed in the prestigious Vestavia Hills that the police will begin to link the bodies together. Lonnie was called by Martez's girlfriend, Candy Hawkins, and was supposed to meet up with her, but instead met Martez C. and the end of his gun. Lonnie was a hard-working man with dreams of opening up a jazz nightclub. In May of 2009, his dreams were cut short. Lonnie Vaughn's body was found Sunday morning in Northeast Jefferson County. Lonnie Vaughn was doing everything he could to survive tough economic times and provide for his family, police and family members said. The Vestavia Hills father of two contracted out odd jobs, detailed cars, and was preparing to open a jazz nightclub downtown. But his dream to build a successful business of his own came to an end when someone shot him execution style, firing one bullet between the eyes and then multiple others. His slain, Birmingham's 22nd this year, had his family reeling from grief on Tuesday. The police will find out that Candy Hawkins was one of the last numbers that Vaughn had talked to, and the investigation would go from there. Eventually, the police would begin looking for Candy, and she would go into hide. C would end up getting incarcerated and charged with several bodies. Then he would order a hit from jail on his girlfriend to tie up that loose end. The hit was carried out and Candy will end up paralyzed. Hey man, I ask you something, man. If I could get you close to somebody, could you get rid of her, baby? Yeah. I mean, you know, you know pretty much what it takes. If you the mother, can right? Yeah. I'm saying, if I could get you close, could you get rid of her, baby? Yeah. Who? Man, they got, you know, they got some lollipop. Afterwards, she would testify against him. Hawkins, who had been hiding with C family members, Later told police she thought she was getting a ride to a safe house when she climbed into a car with Demarius C. and Michael Mays. Instead, Mays shot her twice in the head. At that point, Jefferson County District Attorney Brandon Falls subpoenaed county jail phone records and provided a secretary, despite county budget woes, who spent an entire month transcribing hundreds of hours of phone conversations between the C brothers, their mother Yolanda C., and family and friends including Mays and Gregory Green. Martez C. was in jail in the Vaughn case. 
Demaris C. was in jail part of that time on an unrelated case. Jail phone calls are routinely recorded. The calls investigators said clearly chronicled a conspiracy to kill Hawkins, who wanted to talk to police. While the calls were being analyzed, at least five Birmingham detectives were pounding the streets, some of them out of state, using those taped phone calls to interview and re-interview witnesses who were becoming more willing to talk as suspects were being identified, arrested, and locked up. The code of silence, they said, was crumbling. They had refused to talk because they were scared. Martez would end up pleading guilty to five murders and an attempted murder and receiving a life without sentence. His brother Cortez C. would end up receiving life with parole plus 25 years for the murder and robbery of a 50-year-old man. The baby brother, Demarius C., who was charged with the capital murder for shooting a high school student, was bonded out by Candy Hawkins on a $100,000 bail only to end up shooting her and leaving her for dead with Michael Mays and Gregory Green. He would end up pleading guilty to felony murder and the attempt on Candy and receiving a life sentence. Yolanda C. was also wrapped up in the attempted murder of Candy and received 10 years with all but 18 months suspended on the conspiracy charge. Martez C. would end up dying in prison not too long ago. Martez C., who admitted to killing five people in the Birmingham area in 2008 and 2009, has died in prison. The 39-year-old C. avoided the death penalty more than a decade ago when he pleaded guilty to capital murder in a seven-month crime spree. He also pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder in the 2008 shooting of his girlfriend, Candy Hawkins, who was left paralyzed. C, the leader of a violent gang and described in the first 48 as a cold-blooded killer, died Monday at Limestone Correctional Facility where he was serving life without parole. Alabama Department of Corrections officials said C was found unresponsive Monday in his cell. He was taken to the prison's health care unit where he was pronounced dead by the attending physician. And I think that what we can learn from the story of Martez C is this. The streets are always the easiest route to take because no one is accepted quicker than someone that's willing to crash out. At the same time, there's no shortage of guys that want to live that life and chase those results. Be different, chase life instead of death. And ladies, you love street dudes until you either put in a position to have to snitch die or ride through a long prison stint. You are not made to go through that. Get you a nigga with a nine to five. He may not have all of the income in the world, but at least you know that he's coming back home. This has been the first episode of Street Chronicles by Street News TV. It's your boy. I'm out. The Department of Corrections tells us that Martez C. was found unresponsive in his cell Monday at Limestone Correctional Facility. They say he was taken to a health care unit where he was pronounced dead shortly afterward. A cause of death is being investigated. He was serving a life sentence on a murder charge.